Okay. Okay, so I, um, as I said, today's course is today's class is not going to be um, one of my usuals, right? So usually, like I like I've been saying before, I started recording. I will do something on a specific topic, and that will be the topic that we talk about for the entire time, and then we look at charts, etc. However, I've got well. First, first of all, Leila Akbar, who's been with me for the entire the entire run of this thing or this thing that I've been doing, um, she's here. I have a new guy, Kutsi Fianco, and um, I thought it would be a fun and interesting thing to do to make this into a one, a question and answer. So when people have questions about anything, they could just ask. And then two, um, to make this into a, a practice session for the participants here. So I'm gonna do two different types of charts as participants, for the participants. The first chart type of chart will be the, the typical kind of blind chart where they don't know who it is, and they're going to make they should be making certain you know possibilities or whatever and here's the thing don't be afraid to be wrong being wrong is important right being wrong is an important part of being right and especially when it comes to this so you really the the most important thing and when other people unless it's just gonna be the three of us but if other people show up today too i will continue to say this don't be afraid to be wrong make your judgments make your judgments the most important thing is are your judgments based on some kind of really good foundation? And that's all that really matters. Oh, Chris Pappas is here. So, he, oh, the electricity flicked. Okay, so you might. Okay, so you may not be. Christopher, welcome back! Yay! So uh, good to see you, or good to have you happy, here. Brother. Happy to be here. It's been like spring and summertime, and so there's just so much work out in our land. I haven't, I've been, but I've been catching the recordings. <laughs> Good, good. Well, I'm it just was well, lovely to have you with me. And this will be great because I've just started talking about what we're going to be doing today and how I kind of think, you know, what we can kind of uh, what, what I think this session is going to, going to be about. So as I was saying, the first type of chart that I'm going to kind of put forward is going to be a blind chart where people make their their judgments. The second type of chart that I'm going to put is a chart are charts that I've gotten from Reddit where there's a specific question asked. And I'm gonna ask you, now I can't, I can't um, confirm any of these charts, but I'm gonna ask you what your advice would be in this particular situation. And I'm gonna, uh, I'll show a chart in a second that has that, this particular thing. Okay, here's one, I've been feeling Hopeless, confused, and unmotivated. And I want to know what you all think about, one, think about the chart, and two, what do you think you would tell them to help them? <clears throat> so let, let me create a little, can everybody see the chart? Yeah, you all should be able to. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, can you zoom in a little? It's a little far away. Is it? Okay, hold on. Let me see. I might be able to make it bigger. The cursor at the end of the screen? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, whoa. It's really uh -oh. oh, well, here we go. The bottom left. Yeah. Way too big. I'm trying to move it. There we go. It's hard to, it seems like it will only go like one of two. Oh, okay. It'll only go either too big or too little. Can, can you yeah. see, can you see okay with this? Yeah, I think okay. it's okay. Okay. Um, okay, so this person is saying, I feel, I feel confused, hopeless, and unmotivated. What would be your advice to them based on this chart? Well, first of all, what's happening? What's going on in this chart? What's applying, what's separating? What's angular? You know, what are, what, what are the things that, what are the things that we would look at first? Saturn okay, moon. The, the Saturn and the moon? Yeah. What, what did you just say, um, Layla? I, um, I think the Venus is applying to a Saturn. Yes, she is. From the ascendant. Mm-hmm. So what houses does Saturn rule? 
this you got the Venus on the ascendant. So first of all, you've got Venus on the ascendant. What would that tell us? Or what would what would I, I think in that would be some kind of of information that we could give them? What would we tell them? Yeah, it's detriment. <sighs> but but as far as advice is concerned, right? So now we're so we're trying to answer this question, or we're trying to solve this quandary. We're trying to use this chart to solve this quandary. I've been feeling confused, hopeless, and unmotivated. So first, let's do let's do three things. What planet is the word confused? Or what combination? How would you translate that word into something astrological? Confusion. Confusion. Now, confusion happens I where? It happens in the head, so we're going to look mind. at the Mercury. In the and mind. The Mercury. So it's either Mercury or Moon, right? Yeah. It's either Mercury or Moon because both of them are mine. Now, then hopeless. What's hopeless and unmotivated? Saturn. Saturn. Yeah. So what's this person really saying? They're saying, I'm feeling my moon Saturn. That's what they're saying. Mm, yeah. They're saying that they're saying, this is how my moon Saturn operates. This is how my moon Saturn uh, manifests. I feel confused, hopeless, and unmotivated. What would be a key out of that for them? Where would we look? Mm. We're going to look at for uh, the hopes is uh, basically the 11th house. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's a great. I wasn't I wasn't even going there, but I love that. So what so can we rely on the 11th house ruler in this chart? Um well it's mercury but mercury is being combusted by sun and where and what else it's it's uh, it's right at the cusp of the 12th house right so that says already that we know that there's a difficulty okay so remember when we looked at the 11th house a few weeks ago everything mm -hmm. that we talked about was about the realization of future of the dreams for the future yeah with this chart is that an, is that something that's easy for this chart to manifest no it's not no it's not right so this is and so more than likely this is why mm, yeah so this is why they feel confused hopeless and unmotivated look at how the moon is in cancer right cancer is cancer is not linear it is right not, yeah. cancer is not linear it's circular so this person may get into obsessive thinking of course they're depressed they're hopeless they're unmotivated so what would be the what would be a, uh, something that we could what could we tell them what could we how could we help them? Um, it's quite difficult because uh, she has a fallen sun, the Saturn is fallen, the moon has good dignity, but it's still with Saturn and in the eighth house, the Venus is fallen. But tell me, what, but what is it, but what is it that I always say? I always say anything can work on a personal that's level. That's right. Thus, keeping that in mind. Okay. Wait, what say would it again? we tell them? Huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Patrick. Um, good. Uh, I was gonna say, what was it that you said, Layla? Layla, what did you just say? Anything can uh I I, I forgot myself. <laughs> Uh, anything can work on a personal level. Anything uh -huh. can be made to work on a, on the personal level. Yeah. Thus, what? Okay. To, so okay. I, I mean, I love that you went to the eleventh house ruler to see about that. That was fantastic. But unfortunately, we can't really count on that, can we? Yeah, we cannot. Absolutely but, not. But there is something we can count on the, in this chart, despite the detriments, because anything can be made to work on a personal level. We've got uh -oh. the Venus on the ascendant, ascendant, on the cusp of the ascendant. Yeah. And then we've got the Venus applying to the sextile of the Jupiter. Now, there's no, there's no help. They're not helping each other, right? She's in detriment. He's in detriment. He's in her fall. 
she's in his peregrine so that's it's so they can't do a whole they can't fully uplift but what i would tell this person is even if it's even if you can't make money from it even if you're bad at it you need to find some kind of creative pursuit painting dancing music something right because those are all venus's things and note how venus and jupiter are both the rulers of the fifth house what am i always saying too that if there's a problem with depression we need mm -hmm. to go to their fifth house to find their joy yeah so in this particular case even though both are detrimented she still needs to do them right Right. So, I mean, so it's, it's, it's an important thing to move, uh, move away from the phase of, of noting what everything is happening and then moving into how that might manifest, how that might, perm how the permutation may work out. And like uh, this, and the, you're right, this chart is kind of shitty as far as, um, as far as uh, its central dignity is concerned, even as far like the moon's in not in good position, thankfully she's separating from Saturn. Jupiter is not in good condition. This person's struggling. Look, Jupiter's ruler of the second house too. So we know this person is struggling financially as well. <clears throat> so there are all kinds of issues in this chart, but, but when they come to us, when a person comes to us, they're still coming to us trying to figure out you know they need something from us and the and and we're the only ones who can decipher the message so um yeah so be thinking i think what i was trying to kind of drive at was one of the very first things that we looked at when we looked at the 146 considerations of banati was what planets are angular mm -hmm. right in this particular case we weren't looking to see what planets were angular based on what houses they rule you know, and what that might mean about what's happening in the person's life. We know this person, right, Jupiter is angular, so we know this person's got money problems and has problems enjoying themselves. Or might, or Jupiter's in Virgo, which is sterile, so they might have problems getting pregnant. There's other fertile signs. Mars is in a fertile sign. Venus is fertile. Moon is fertile. But Moon is with Saturn. Right? Venus is detrimented, but fertile. Mars, but Mars is fertile. Right? So, Already, we've got different things that we could kind of come to, we could kind of look at with this chart and say, hmm, I see this. But if we were just trying to, to solve this quandary, I would point to the Venus Jupiter and try to, and because especially this person needs the Venus Jupiter because the Venus, the Venus is cutting off the opposition between the Mars and the Jupiter in this chart. Anybody else have other? Now, does this chart evoke any other questions? Remember, this is also a question and answer session. So when looking at this chart, does it bring up any questions that you want to ask? I'm, I'm kind of wondering, um, like, what kind of statement could be made about the moon being in Cancer, so it's in its domicile, but then with Saturn right there. So it seems like a strong moon, but with Saturn right on top of it. Um, like how would that kind of manifest? It's impeded. It's an impeded moon, mm -hmm. right? Any planet that's, Banani says, any planet that's conjunct square or opposition to malefic is impeded. For, and, and how, do, right? And we and we know how it manifests. It manifests in feeling confused, hopeless, and unmotivated. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I've been feeling. Feeling is the moon for is the word from who? The moon. So would it, be, would it be something like, because the moon is in cancer in its home sign, it's almost like the feelings of, of this hopelessness and confusion would be amplified? Yes, I, I think so. Because I don't necessarily think, hey, y'all remember when we did that, we did the, um, the, 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 the moon in a chart, like how the, the moon's roll in the natal chart. And I had the two charts of my friends and one of them was cancer rising. And he was the one who could barely make a coherent sentence and um, could, has never been able to hold a job down. And re remember, the moon's natural the moon's natural state is instability and change. 
That's that's her natural function. So here she is. So when she's in cancer, it also it makes it more of kind of what I call the human weather vane thing. But but when she's in cancer, she's she's being as much as herself. She's being a really strong version of herself. And it might be interesting and important to figure out exactly which lunar day she's in, because you know the thing is, if she's if she is if she's in cancer and it's on a weird lunar day that's not necessarily a good one for her then maybe then she might be better or she might be worse and i'm getting that i'm going kind of into the vedic when i talk about that but ultimately when you ask me how a planet like the moon is going to operate when she's in her own sign we already know that she's going to operate in a circular and feeling manner or a cyclical and feeling manner so the saturn is going to be attached to that cycle like so she's going to attach saturn to a conveyor belt and so every time certain the, so the thoughts that will circle in the mind remember we were looking at the sun is the soul and the moon is our thoughts like what we think about how we organize our thinking is mercury but our actual the the, the mana the the manas what what the indians call manas the stuff of our mind and the thoughts themselves and we know how thoughts think about when we get obsessive when we get obsessive what do we do we cycle back to the same thought over and over again that's the moon right so the moon is the cyclical constant motion thing kind of happening so i think that when she's in cancer i think that we might we might have a tendency to or rather instead of saying we have a tendency maybe what the the real skill is engaging exactly how the planet is benefited by being in its own sign and detrimented by being in its detriment or fall right because and it, and when we need to ignore it in this particular case of the, of dealing with this quandary of feeling help, helpless confused and unmotivated then we have to ignore some of these detriments right we know it should but we have to ignore it so that we can actually find some hope to give them. We know that this person deals with crippling depression. We know that it cycles back and forth. And like you said, that the moon may indeed amplify. So, and, and it's, it's, the, it's the waning or the, it's the waning phase of the moon as well. So, you know, so it could, so it's the dark side of the moon and she's with Saturn and Saturn is darkness. So this person could have very dark thoughts consistently dark thoughts like you said hopelessness unmotivated there's no light when we're when there's no hope there's no light i would ask one question though what's that uh what's her like because what i noticed here is that the moon and saturn they're so close to the cusp of the ninth house hmm. so uh, is there anything going on in there like what's her edu like is she having trouble in college Oh, well, more than likely, well, remember, if we think about the moon, like we were talking about with the moon being everything, co-ruler for everything, right? And when we were talking about that, we came to the conclusion that we basically carry her into every house. Yeah. Right? She comes into every house with us. That means that moon Saturn, when I carry moon Saturn into the seventh house, I could get frigid. When I carry moon Saturn into the ninth house, I could either be really good at concentration, right? Because Saturn represents profundity and depth and, and deep concentration. Mm -hmm. Or I could be so depressed that I can't concentrate. Yeah, makes sense. In this particular case, the ruler of the ninth is stronger than the Saturn. The Saturn is detrimented. Mm -hmm. However, we also know that when the moon is with the planet who's in detriment, it impedes her. Yeah. So these are all the things to kind of take into consideration, but to not take too serious, but to not dwell on. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, once we see them, all we should be thinking is, how does that show up? How is it showing up? Because they're going to show us how. They're going to tell us. It's like I said when I had that I had that one client and I wasn't sure if the time was right. And she had a Mars Saturn opposition. And I was like, well, this motherfucker is going to show up for sure. And it sure enough, it showed up exactly the way that I thought it did. And which showed me that the chart was right, but it was going to show up. 
And so that's kind of my, my feeling with it. When we get into the actual delineation, then there's a fine line that we're kind of dealing with around all of, this, all of the information we've taken in and how we're actually gonna juggle it to help someone. Because we can't go into the into the, the the reading with her and say, well, your Venus is in detriment, so that's I mean, I can, but that's only because I figured out how to do it in a in a delicate or funny way that is helpful. But you know, we're but we're not going to read off a list of all the shit that sucks in their chart and say, oh well, you know, hey, right? So one of the issues with obvious one of the one of the well, okay, well, based on what I've just said, okay, so in my opinion, some of what I just said gives us a little bit more information. Based on what I just said, what other advice would you give this chart? Hi, um, hey, welcome. Anyone? Because I've, I've addressed the Venus Jupiter, but I haven't really addressed the moon Saturn, have I? That's basically my point, is I didn't really say anything about how to deal with the moon Saturn, which on some level is kind of really their point, is really their question. So, what would, so knowing that the moon is the ruler of the ninth house, what would be some kind of remedy we could give them? I mean, on, on some level, you know, seeing the trine between the Venus and the moon Saturn, you could imagine them perhaps meeting someone and studying or traveling or, <laughs> you know, putting themselves out there in a sort of ninth house kind of way. It seems yeah. like whatever would happen in that way would, would flow a little bit more naturally than other areas in the chart. I could certainly see there being an interest in foreign things. The first triplicity ruler of the ninth house is Venus, and she's on the ascendant, mm -hmm. even though she's in detriment. You know, so um, I this I would actually one of the first things I would tell this person is to find a body of water to sit by and relax by. Look at all the waters, all the water planet stuff in it. And so it's water, Scorpio rising, Mars is in Pisces. I would, I would, and Venus, remember Venus is a Jala planet. Venus is a water planet. The moon is a water planet. Look, look at how much water is, in, is, is basically being affected in this chart. Uh, one of the things I would actually maybe approach this person to do would be to get really deeply into swimming. Note that the fish is on the fifth house. Yeah. Very nice. And the ruler of the ascendant is on the on the uh, is in Pisces. Yeah, this person needs this person needs to get in touch with their world. More than likely, what's happening is the Saturn is freezing their water. The Saturn is freezing much of their water, much of the flow. It's freezing out much of their flow, and instead of them being able to, so the, if the difference with the the moon and Cancer, the might the person might be more volatile. To be honest with you, like my friend, they might be more volatile and might be more might be more flighty. This would actually make the person maybe a little bit more steady, maybe a little bit more steady, but at the same time more susceptible to pessimism and more susceptible to uh, yeah, and to, to being kind of uh, earthbound or, or, or chained to the ground. And so this person, but this person can't fly, even though, even though Jupiter is in Virgo, which has wings, Mars is in Pisces, which has wings. So that's the way for this person to fly is through the, in the water. This person needs to swim. All right, let's go to the next chart. Do I come up with another one? Oh, I seriously lack self-control. Okay. This person seriously lacks self-control. Where is that? <laughs> Well, this should be really easy. Jupiter in the 12th? Not just Jupiter. Jupiter Venus. Yes. What do I always yeah. say about Jupiter Venus? Too much. 
of a good thing. And trying to the moon. And there, and that was going to be my next question. Is there any connection with the moon? Because the moon is our reflexes. And where and what sign is the moon in? Pisces. And who are the two rulers of Pisces? The moon, uh, Venus and Jupiter. Yes. And and yeah. and who is the moon applying to? Uh, Venus and uh, Jupiter. Venus, Venus and Jupiter. Yeah. yeah. So so that's the problem right that's the main problem and all that stuff is in the 12th of the self undoing and who rules the 12th uh it's moon again <laughs> right so we see yep. what the problem is yep what do we tell them all right uh this is, a, I mean, it's obvious, right? It's, 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 so this is the thing we wanted all of these things that I've just said, right? All these things that I've been saying for months, Hey, Layla, all of these things that I've been saying for months, right? Yeah. Um, right. And I've been saying for months and months and months, Venus, Jupiter, too much of a good thing. Self 12th house, you know, self undoing, um, base. Okay. So uh, it's, I think it's so Ching, right? Yeah. It's, I'm pretty sure it's so Ching. So Ching and Layla, hey, great to see you all. I'm so happy to have you. And basically, hi, I, hi <laughs> and I took your advice, <clears throat> but I'm doing a little bit of a, of a thing on it. So I took your advice and we're doing what you asked, which was like the Q&A and the, uh, the blind chart. But instead of specifically blind chart, I thought I would do a combination, part blind chart and part a chart you've never seen that has a quandary that needs to be solved, how would we do it? Oof, I love it. This person has problems with excess. This person, right, okay. exactly. So that's where you just came in is with this particular person. So what is it we need to tell them? What is it we need to tell them to help them? With there is also a square between Moon and Saturn. Uh-huh. Uh, and but Saturn's rules the sixth and seventh. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is some sort of restraint that they can uh, exercise over that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, over that part of the life, you mean? Yeah, uh, kind of those, those themes. I mean, I don't understand. Did they explain um, uh, what things are they with the overindulged? No, I mean, we can, but we can probably tell what house is this Jupiter and Venus rule. What yeah. are we looking at? So Three. Jupiter and Venus rule. Ten. It's the fifth house. Okay, of course. <laughs> and uh, then it's the tenth eight. house. Eight. The third. Yeah. I mean, if we look at just whole sign, the tenth. Right, um, right. So already, so fifth house and the second Jupiter rule. The fifth house is is Jupiter. Jupiter. All right, already. So this person probably likes sweet things. Probably likes rich and sweet food. Probably likes sex quite a bit. Um, does this person drink? Do they drink? Probably drink. I don't know. We're, uh, yeah, we're, this. So oh, sorry. Does someone know, or are we all blind right now? Yeah. No. No. So okay. So everybody is blind. Got it. Everybody is blind. What we're so with these charts, um, with these particular charts that I can't confirm, these are theoretical. If they came to me for a reading, what would I tell them to to solve this quantity? Oh my god, I love it. Okay, okay, I'm on board. I'm on Got board. it. And so I yeah, seriously yeah. lack self control. So what would we? What would? How would we solve that quandary using this chart? And then we'll get to the 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 two um, blind charts that I have. Okay. So we know, so we see the problem strongly, right? The problem is self-evident, right? The problem is super, 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 hyper, hyper evident, which, so, and this is kind of, in my opinion, this is why I'm always saying that the entire chart is the record of your karma. This is the karmic heritage they brought in, this moon, Venus, Jupiter thing. And it's mutual reception. Nobody even said anything about that between moon and jupiter yeah and, yes. and there was a mixed reception between the venus and the moon <laughs> right so yeah right so it's this is major karma okay so you know when i'm always making these comments about not every trine is made the same and not you know this trine 
This trine is a different trine than if the moon were in, in Aquarius and Venus and Jupiter were in Gemini, right? Yeah. That's a really yeah. different trine. They'd still be in trine. They'd still be trining. A lot of water. I think that, I think, is she, is she, is she? Oh, gentlemen. I it's think he's got to, I think he's got to dry out. And I okay. mean, it in the air sense, I would like lean into intellectual stuff and maybe groups of people. I think that might help. I like that. I think I think that's a good point because what you're doing is you're taking him to the, where the Sun, Saturn, and the Mercury are. Yeah. Um, now, one of the things that now this chart is hard too, right? This is a, a difficult chart as well because note that the Sun, Saturn, are, is with Rahu. Yeah, and opposing Pluto. Meaning to make it difficult, and also that means that then the ruler of the seventh is combust. So this person's going to have problems with people. Yeah. Look at Mercury too. It's under, no, it's not under the beams anymore. No, no, it is. Excuse me. It's retrograde. It's retrograding out. out it's still under the beams. It's yeah. retrograding out of combustion, but under the beams. Yes, absolutely. But correct. if it's retrograding, isn't that mean it's approaching? Oh, no, excuse me. Sorry, it's going away. away. Yeah. Moving yeah. away from the sun. Um, this chart has a lot of problems. Has has a few, few problems. This chart, okay, so first of all, we've got this uh uh, impulse control issue, right? So there's an impulse control issue in this chart first. Um, and it looks like indeed the sun Saturn should be the should be the thing that helps it, right? Or should be the, I mean, that's naturally kind of where I'm kind of gravitating as well. Look also how this Mars is in Cancer. See the Mars is, see every everything is kind of geared towards this trine, that, that everything's moving towards the trine. But we do, like you say, but we have this Mercury. I, to be honest with you, I think that this person might do, might be a little bit schizophrenic. They might hyper, um, they might hyper regiment one aspect of their life and then let themselves go in another. You right? see that with the Mercury as I see it with the Saturn. I see it, Saturn. well, I see it with the ruler of the ascendant being in Gemini. There's mm -hmm. going to be two expressions. There's going to be more than one expression. My rule of my ascendant is Gemini. I have, I have a friend that I, I used to have, um, I, I was adopted. So I, before I met my birth mother, I had the wrong time. <clears throat> and um, then, and so I had a friend while I had the wrong time. I had a friend that would always talk about how talking to me was like talking to two different people, especially if I were in a quandary of some sort. Okay. Press. Okay. And he, say, and he started. Yes. He started dubbing me yes. the twins. He started dubbing. Yes. He goes, "Oh, those are the twins." Blah blah blah. And he goes, "Oh, the twins are there again." Ha ha ha. But I had a Libra rising with Venus and Venus and Aquarius then. So I meet my mother in 1998, and she's like, "Oh no, you weren't born at that time. You were born at this time, which is the chart that you all have seen that I have, which is the Sagittarius rising with Jupiter and Gemini." And there the two twins are, and, and thus the whole thing with the twins. So this person's gonna have that same kind of expression. This person's gonna have the lusty, self-indulgent, impulse control. But I think you're, you're leaving out the good part of having all that Gemini. Like being kind of like schizophrenic, frenetic, means that you're able to entertain multiple ideas at once. This person's oh. probably pretty intelligent. Oh, I didn't say there's anything bad. Okay. I'm just saying, oh, I'm, that, <laughs> I'm saying that there's more than one. I'm not, yes. I'm not making yes. any judgment. You're not making I'm a quality There judgment. will be more than one expression okay. to this person. My bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not making any more, any kind of judgment. My point is that the opposite of lack of control is discipline. Who rules that? Saturn. That's right. So it really is the Sun Saturn that has to be in charge. However, more than likely, this per the problem for this person is that there are two of them. And so he's only controlling one of them. Got it. And Rahu being there, what are we, how do we see that one? Foreign, maybe it could be foreign. It could be, see, the thing is, I think that that might mean that there's, it could make it more difficult to control. Right, because Rahu, remember, he's highly ambitious and he's very got the voracious appetite. Yeah. Ap so it's like stuff you can't get enough of. And if it's on Saturn, okay, so me personally, when I try and diet and I restrict way too intensely, 
I end up binging later. Like if I don't eat for a couple of days, mm. that vibes to me, like this person, like mm-hmm. very, very restrictive and controlled until the other part almost takes over. And then it's like Mardi Gras. Yeah. Also be the opposition with Pluto. I mean, which close with Saturn. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And close to the sun. More importantly, the sun is applying. Mm -hmm. And the sun is the rule of the chart. So this person has, first of all, I mean, I don't generally, I mean, I I don't generally make this, uh, what's the word I'm saying? I don't make this prescription, but it's, but it's kind of implied all the time. Most people need to be involved in some kind of therapy. Right. Most people need to be involved. And I would definitely say all people. (laughs) Right. I mean, almost all people people can benefit. We don't all desperately need it, but we all need it. But I think this person could benefit from it, mostly because talk therapy would be very useful. And also because I think that this person is being extremely judgmental to themselves because they can't control themselves, which makes them act out more. So the first thing I would actually do is I would I would attack the self judgment because this person is judging themselves over it, right? We know they're judging themselves because they wrote into Reddit saying I seriously lack self control. Is that what they wrote in saying? They wrote in. This is the title of their of their Reddit post. Oh my god, dude! All of these Reddit posts, all of these are charts I'm showing for now are Reddit posts, and they're all the titles of their Reddit posts. Oh my god, you are fabulous. So that's my point here is this person is judging themselves. So the very first thing that has to happen is they have to dismantle the judge and start to see themselves in a neutral way. The very first thing I would do is I would really, really make them feel comfortable about this. They cannot change it. They cannot, they, they, can, they can create systems to keep it in check, but it is a major, major core of who they are. Yeah, and it's probably not all bad. I think it's that's, not that's all probably bad. helpful too, exactly. You're sure. saying like, it brings the problems, but the two benefics in the chart, one of them exalted, it's not, it cannot be all bad. Well, I mean, it's in the 12th house of self undoing, so we know it's bad. No, that's I don't, even that's the other thing. Control. We yeah. know it's bad because we know the Venus and the moon are too much of a good thing and they're in the 12th. So we know they're going to put that. So we know that there's garbage there. However, we don't want to, we don't want to say that to them, right? We don't want to be talk, talking like that to them, right? So we've got to be finding the beauty. Like you're, we're, we got to be where you are right now with that. But we can't say, it, you know, we, it's in the 12th. 12th is self undoing. It's undoing him. That's why he has written in. But isn't yeah. Isn't there like the question of having the benefics in a bad house? Isn't on some level, there's like a protective quality against the bad sig- significations, especially because, you know, um, Jupiter. I've heard that too. I think it's more a modern thing, but especially Jupiter in the 12th, they call it the guardian angel placement. <laughs> yeah. I was well, like, wait, he's going to go up on this. <laughs> Does this motherfucker sound like he have a guardian angel? No, but I would also say, I don't think 12th completely undoes good planets. I think there's probably something still good happening there. What it is, I don't know. The the planet will Mostly be bad though. The, the planet will be itself within the context of where it is. However, we know two things. We know that planets are in a state of advancement when they are in angles or succeeding houses, and they are in a state of retreat or deterioration when they are in Caden houses. What kind of house is the 12th house? Yeah. Right. So that's a that's part of the problem is where it is. It might not be it, 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 but it could be that uh, it first of all, we know Venus in the 12th house can give us great sex. Because it's the behind closed doors. Right. Are we talking whole signs or are we talking all house systems? All house systems. All systems. You got to have it, though, to feel how good it is first. You got to have it first to know how good it is. You didn't need to, to burn but, me with that. But once you have it, I wasn't talking about you. I, I mean, once, I wasn't talking about I was just saying, but that once you have it, it, it should be fucking good as hell. I didn't. That was not my intention, I promise you. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just 
just messing with you. Oh, good, good. Because <laughs> I, I like when you said, I'm like, oh my God, sorry. Um, but <clears throat> but we also know that when we see Venus in the 12th, usually that means that we don't go for people that we can have. Our, our, our relationship often doesn't get to see the light of day. So it yeah. can be so good behind closed doors, but I can't hold ha hands with him because he, he is married. Or yep. he is straight in regular life, or he is, but or she is, blah blah blah, or whatever, right? So we know that those are the aspects of it that show up, and so yeah, in private it can be so damn good, mm -hmm. but we don't want the be, but where, but we don't want to keep the benefic pl planets in in a cupboard, right? Do we? Do we want the the benefic planets in a cupboard? No, we want them. Absolutely not. We want them on the roof, right? That's kind of where the midheaven would be in a house, right? We want them on the roof. We want them at the front door. Yep. Right. We don't want them in a cupboard. We don't want them in the pantry, and so that's where that's where they end up when they're in. Which means that hell, that's a, a well stocked pantry. Venus, Jupiter, and the, and the pantry. Oh my God, it's a beautifully stocked pantry. But fuck that shit. I want it in the in the driveway. I want it at the front door. Yeah, this, pro the this person probably too. Whatever they indulge in, they're probably experts on that thing, and they probably use in private. Oh, you're right. That's a great, a great, great uh, observation. Like this person is probably very, very systematic, system oriented. Um, a directions oriented. I yeah, I bet this person, yeah, great with a vibrator, that kind of thing. Yeah, like they know what to do. Mm -hmm. They do it by themselves though, and in private. Yeah, whatever I mean, it is that they do. <laughs> yeah, great with the tongue, right? Because Mercury, because Mercury, uh, well, Sun is ruling the second, but Mercury is the natural ruler of the second, and he rules the tongue and Sun and Saturn. Yes, yeah, so this prob person person probably does very good oral sex. All right, well, so let's move on to the next term. So, I mean, we, we, oh, so did we come up with what we would tell them? What would we tell them? Oh, I already did, didn't I? First of all, it was the judgment, the lack yeah. of the judgment. Get and therapy then, so you don't judge yourself then. Don't yeah. judge yourself. And then the second thing was realizing that there's more than one of you, right? More than one. Oh, here's one, repressed homo. This guy oh. was... From okay. the same from the same chart? How? A different one. A different one. I'm oh, about, okay. I'm what? About to pull it up. I'm about to pull it up. And I got one if you want one later that oh. I was I would kill well not kill but I would love for you to read. All right. Uh, so this uh, all right. So this guy was I, I I shortened it, but he basically was talking about how he was really really repressed and in the closet and he went through all of this you know horrible horrible stuff. You know, he went through all, you know, he went through all this really difficult time or over it. Um, and I've always wondered how it is that some men, some people have problems with their homosexuality. Some people have no problem at all, uh, you know, with, with theirs, you know, and so who, and some people have feelings, but never act on it. Some people have feelings and might be in relationships, but act on it their entire life. I've always been really interested in stuff like this. Look so, at that Mars placement. The Mars placement, Mars. It is the most 12th house you can get to right on that cusp. Hmm. And it's dignified. I mean, it's in Scorpio, which you think would help. But I feel like that has like an interiorization more so than like a cardinal Aries. Mm -hmm. It's not good. That's that's like un, I would say almost like unhealthy sexual expression or lack thereof. I wonder if it's even about sex, right? I mean, we tend to over we tend to over overestimate this idea of Scorpio as dealing with sex because it rules the genitals. But Scorpio is really about control. Yeah. No, I, I meant Mars, not so much Scorpio. Oh, Mars. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, I was thinking Mars and Scorpio. I was. I yeah, both of them. Got it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's issues uh, of control. What were you going to say? I do have one question, though, because I know we don't look at out of sign aspects, but the Venus is right on the 29th, like 30th degree, and uh, the Mars has just entered into the Scorpio. Yeah, applying to the Mars. I would have her applying. I would make that her applying to Mars. Yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. I would I would make that a sextile. Mm. Definitely. So what do we tell this? So, okay, so for, okay, so first of all, that's how we know 
then that this person is, and Mars is the ruler of the fifth. So yeah. look at how Mars is the ruler of the fifth. So Mars is already having, you know, Mars is at the 12th, which is the self undoing. He's the ruler of the ascendant. And mm -hmm. the fifth. Uh huh. And he's with Mercury and the Sun. Let's see. And he is within the. He is still within the um, under the beams of the Sun. I can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that this person is extremely private. Yeah, my dude. Yeah. And note that the Jupiter is the rule of the fourth is you know, fourth is house of secrets, rule of the fourth is in the eighth. Eighth house. Exalted and, and great. But also the I mean, what are we looking at this whole sign? We're saying Sagittarius is second. Uh no, I said the ruler of the fourth. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just thinking of the other parts of, of Jupiter, because that's the exalt like I think that's where he has to lean a little bit. You would you would point him there? Yeah, into that opposition. Jupiter, exactly. although retrograde is exalted, and it's looking at all the other, a lot of the other planets in his chart that are not cadent. But it's also post Saturn here. It's applying yeah. to the position of Saturn. Yeah. I mean, he did he did get over it. But what would we have told him? What would what would what would we have what would we have tried to deal with? What would we have looked at? I would to be uh, for me. I mean, look at look at this. First of all, look at everything in this chart. We've got four planets in Scorpio, and then we've got five planets in. We've got three, four planets in Capricorn. Every single planet in this chart is feminine, except for Venus is in Sagittarius. Oh, okay, that's the only one. But she's about to go into Capricorn. So, yes. yeah. I mean, the two things about about Saturn and Mars as ruler in Scorpio is neither of them are spontaneous, right? Saturn is not spontaneous. Mars can be rash, but really the sign of his rashness is Aries, not Scorpio, as you mentioned. Yeah, Scorpio is the planet of revenge. And, not the yeah, <laughs> and, and poison, right? Scorpio is death through poison. It's the silent killer. You don't yeah. know it's coming. And it's female too, right? That's why they call it the woman's weapon. Uh -huh, exactly. That's right. They call it the woman's weapon. That's right. So in this particular chart, I think that this person has poisoned themselves. The moon's there. I mean, Mar a sun is there. Mercury is there. Moon is there. I mean, Mars is there. I keep saying moon. Um, so, so in this particular case, right, because the poison is in the 12th house, the poison, the self undoing is the poison. This person poisoned his himself, and and especially poisoned his ability to enjoy himself sexually. So the first thing would be to remove the poison, but we know that this person is cautious and fearful, because Moon is in Capricorn with Saturn. Saturn is slow. Saturn is fearful. Saturn is conservative. Do you think it's Cap or Sag? I don't get it. Saturn and Capricorn. No, the Venus. The Venus is in Sag. Okay. But I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the rest of the chart. Yeah, Everything I have this exact this. opposition in my chart. Not quite as exact, but I have it. But you and don't have. But you don't have the Moon and Cap. Moon and Capricorn, and then all of these other things in Scorpio too. This chart is really concentrated. I mean, yeah, you've you got the Jupiter Saturn thing, but that's but that's where the, the 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 it ends. You know what I'm saying? This is well, I have a lot. Of, I have a plan. I have my moon in Scorpio, too. Whatever. It, it doesn't matter. I just meant that I get it. I feel like a lot of times I'm led from a place of fear. So I get that, like a preponderance of fear being in both of yes. in this person's psyche. This person is it, not just fear, but conservatism mm -hmm. and conventionalism. Right, this person didn't want to rock the boat conventionally. Right, see, this person did and might have been worried about status. May even come from a family that's you know. Look at here's the Jupiter in the Pisces in a, in a Cancer as well of the fourth. This person could come from a well well to do family that well, was very conservative. He's gonna probably he might inherit. Right. 
Yeah, he's probably worth some money. Right, so he might have come from a very conservative kind of established family where that might not be a thing that he could do. And mm -hmm. he's not the, the rock boater or boat rocker, there we go. He's not the boat rocking type. This, this, this is a rule follower, this person. That's the problem, right? Being homosexual is against the rules. So this person is a rule follower. And then also Scorpio has a tendency to want to hold on to things or what's the word, retain, retentive, as opposed to, matter of fact, many of the people that I've met that have Scorpio rising and Mars and Scorpio in the first or Scorpio rising with Mars and Scorpio, no matter where it is, they've, they've been the opposite of very sexual. They've been extremely repressed or they've gone through an extreme repression and then finally gotten comfortable with their sexuality like this person. I think it's a defense mechanism, but yeah. So this, <laughs> that is. Retentive, anally. Retentive, yes. So this yeah. person's retentive. <clears throat> retentive and scared, retentive, cautious, conservative, scared, all of those things. And so what, so then what would we do? What would we tell them? What's the key? The key is Mars courage, honey. Yeah, I guess he's got to break a few rules. Mars courage. He's got to have the courage to be who he is. Mm -hmm. Which means no matter who it, no matter what it does or who it, you know, who get, who cares or who matters or whatever. I mean, you, I mean, you still have people that are, you know, that are not, that are not rocking the boat and doing things, um, doing things uh, surreptitiously, etc. And I could see this chart doing that, couldn't you? Couldn't you see this chart marrying somebody and marrying a woman and and having clandestine affairs that no one knows about? Yes. Yes. And and if I don't if I recall correctly, he did. He married somebody, had affairs. Well, actually, what he tried first was he tried to do nothing. Then he found a woman and having sex with her, uh, uh, you started the sex, started having him getting very, you know, sexually agitated for more for more sex, but with men. And then he uh, you know, started you know, cheating on her. And then he finally came to terms and they're divorced. But we can see repressed. Look at the look at what I even said repressed homo. And sure enough, there's all the repression. All of this is all of this can lend, lend itself to repression. So I guess that would be the advice then, wouldn't it? If the tendency is towards repression in all these areas of life, you have to be honest and you have to tell people who you are. Brave. You have to be brave. Yeah. And whatever the it brave is. Brave and like in a revelatory sense. Exactly. Like, whatever scares you is what you have to be confronting. Yeah. In this particular case, we know that, I mean, the natural fifth house, mind you, of course, is Jup is Pisces, which is owned by Jup ruled by Jupiter. So that would be that's an, a very interesting thing, right? But the fifth house based on this chart is ruled by Mars. So we know that there's already an issue, you know, since the Mars is in the 12th, we know that there's already an issue with with pleasure. Yeah, or an issue, or that he finds his pleasure in private with people he doesn't feel like he can see in, in like public. Exactly, exactly. But look at how the, look at how, I mean, the Venus in Sagittarius is very, now this Venus Sagittarius can be very, um, very uh, adventurous. Um, you can, be, it can, uh, I don't know, but it can, it, you know, Sagittarius wants to go into, you know, it could go into kind of the cruising thing, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let me, let me, uh, do you want to go ahead and put that chart into the chat for IMGUR? And then I will um, also bring up one of the next new ones. Rule of MC and Scorpio and 12 trine Jupiter retrograde return with detriment. Oof. Yikes, my dude. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's see. Oh, you want it in Placidus so that you can 
just read whole whole sign whole sign houses if you want, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'll just read it both ways anyway. I always do. Okay. Wait, hold on. It says his name's on it. Hold on. Give me now, a, if you want to share, if you want to share the screen, oh yeah, do what you need to do. I'm going to come back to the chart. Well, I'm going to black out the um the the name. I mean, I can give you the birth time. I think it's faster. I could try and delete it. And no, 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 no. Take your time because I'm going to go. Okay. I'm I'm going to her question. Cool, cool. Okay, ruler of MC in Scorpio in twelfth trying Jupiter retrograde. So Mercury trining Jupiter return with detriment, encouraging the repression of energy. Oh, very interesting. Okay, Mercury and Cancer would be mute. Indeed, all of these planets would be mute. Almost all of them, except for the Saturn. And even the Saturn, even, the, even Saturn is half voiced. So this person already would probably be soft-spoken, might not like to talk a whole lot, already would be prone to not revealing themselves. Excellent point there, Shanice, thank you. Okay, so then let's see about this when you're, okay, so yes, indeed, there is the, the uh, and yes, the, okay, I see what you're saying, okay, got it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes, return of virtue with detriment, and that could, but interestingly enough, the Mercury and the Jupiter Unless we use the Jupiter as ruler of the fifth whole sign, the Mercury and the Jupiter aren't really, in my opinion, necessarily part of the profile with the sexuality. This actually, what it could do instead is it could have made him very religious. This person could have gone into religion instead in order to kind of escape it is what I think might have happened instead. I don't necessarily see the Mercury and Jupiter as part of the repression because Jupiter doesn't repress, even if he's retrograde. <laughs> tell that to my, no, I'm just kidding. Ah, my, preoccupation. Tell that to what? I said, tell that to my uh, retrograde uh, Jupiter and Cancer. Oh, he, that he doesn't repress? You think he does repress? You? No, I think it's something else in my chart. I was just being glib. Oh, good, okay. Um, I, I was wondering, uh, where, did, where was that question posted? I don't see it in the chat. What, what question? From Shanice. Oh, Shanice, let me see. Oh, it's directly to me. That's why. Sorry about that. Oh, I see. She did it directly to me. The question is, ruler of MC and Scorpio in 12th, trine Jupiter retrograde, return with detriment, encouraging the repression of energy. Mercury and Cancer would be mute. And, um, and so then I said what I said, and she said, I was thinking about preoccupation with reputation in response, in uh, relation to that. Um, but, rep ah, reputation ruler, the Mercury ruler of the 10th. I see. And Jupiter, because, oh, that's a good point. I like that. I, I would think of, I was initially thinking of it more with, the, and look at how the Mercury is actually the next application is to Saturn, not to Jupiter. So that makes, in my opinion, more sense. The, uh, the, uh, the um, what's the word I'm looking at? The uh, obsession with status and conventionalism and reputation. So, so that the reputation would be based on some kind of conventionalism or some kind of, uh, what's the word? Or, or, you know, to be reputable is to be sadder in a good way. Conservative. Yeah. Perhaps. More you so than Aquarius. It's, think it's about, cool. well, either way, Saturn. We think about Morton Steakhouse, right? We just heard about Brett Kavanaugh and that whole thing. Morton Steakhouse is this very, very expensive steakhouse. The steakhouse is an American kind of institution. Um, and it's an American institution for like waspy power players. And they will go to places like Morton's and Ruth Chris Steakhouse. And there, there are places like that in London too. Um, I missed the Saturn. I was thinking religion with Jupiter. I think good point though. Good points all though. Fantastic. Um, and they're power places. They're basically where all the high, the high rolling waspy power players will go to these steakhouses, you know, meat and potatoes. That's what all these old white dudes like to eat <coughs> and <clears throat> make their backroom deals, et cetera. So Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh was at Morton's. And so a place like Morton's is what I think of as reputable. It's a very old established that's very Saturn, very kind of old Saturn reputable. I think that this person is that kind of person. Is, you know, just naturally that kind of, kind of a little bit stodgy, very, very, rel relatively very conservative and being gay through a monkey wrench into that for him, which it tends to do often with people that are like that. <laughs> 
with, with, you know, with, anything that's like not considered the norm not yeah. being white not being straight not being whatever i'm really pr primarily even thinking about people who are authoritarian followers so for someone like me being gay is not so difficult um for someone like him it might be much more so because he's already inclined to being an authoritarian um, a rule a rule follower and my chart is much more inclined to being a rule breaker and a line crosser. All right, let's see what's going on here. Okay, so I don't want to be the only one making any comments. So uh, everybody, you know, come in with something. So first of all, we see the moons in the ascendant. So the feeling nature is, and the seventh house is is, is noted. And then we've got this Venus retrograde and she's combust so the first thing i would think is there might be issues with relationships and marriage in this person's chart have they ever been married uh yes yes they have been yes and, they are and difficultly um i'm looking into it from what i understand and i'm embarrassed to say i don't know a ton about this person's married life i should probably know i think the wife it, or oops, I guess I just, well, I can give away the gender. This sure. person's a male. Um, I think the wife of this person, as from what I understand, has exhibited undue influence, a lot of influence on this person. Interesting. Well, that makes sense, right? Because the moon, the rule of the seventh is in the first. Mary. So that would, so that's the, okay, that makes plenty of sense in this particular case that the, that the, um, uh, that the and also look at how the moon is in Aquarius. So there would be some kind of fundamentalist. So the, the, uh, there'd be some kind of a, a, a I don't want to say fundamentalist, but um, rigidity of thinking. So um, yes. So the wife. So more than likely, the wife should be might be relatively cold and rigid in their thinking. Yeah. Um, also, the wife might Saturn. be. Huh. Also, Saturn in the seventh, isn't that? Saturn in the seventh and Saturn in, in what I call misanthropic Leo, the Saturn in Leo is misanthropic usually. So I would imagine that the, the wife is a not very pleasant person at all. Um, that is understating it. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, oh, well, I mean, if it's understating it, then did, well, okay. Now, mind you, no, it's, it's true. I was going to say it's true. Seventh, no, because of the, did, then did this person's wife, lead them to doing something that led them to ruin? Ooh, I think, I think that depends on your point of view. Or, I, yeah. or, okay, did, or did becoming marriage create a downturn in their fortune? Okay, let's look. I actually don't think so. Let's see. Early career. Okay. So I'm looking. I think, I think it's been, I think the marriage has been associated with scandals, but not necessarily um, reversal of fortune in the sense of career. Is, like some, yeah. Is this person an actor or a dancer or a singer or, or something like that? <laughs> No, no. I mean, he. I think he lies, but I don't think he's an actor. I think he lies, but I don't think he's an actor. Interesting, because the Mercury. So the Mercury Venus is why I thought maybe the person might be an actor or a singer, or might be in performance involved. Let in me look. Actor. No, no, no. Definitely not. No, no, oh, no. Not a performer of any kind. Not a performer. No, a public figure, but not a performer. Oh, a public figure, but not a performer. Oh, is this Clarence mm -hmm. Thomas? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. So, interesting. Okay. Well, how did you get to Clarence Thomas from there? Well, he is a performer. Yeah. Because <laughs> see, the thing is, because of my age, I was, I was, I watched the Anita Hill. Okay. So, I guess in that sense, he was. I, I, the whole thing basically. Was it farce? No, it, he's a token. Yeah. He's well, a, no, he's, he's basically he's a, he's a token. He was there to he was there to replace Thurgood Marshall. You know, Thurgood Marshall was the good progressive, and he's he is basically the Republicans' boy. So he has never really been. He's never really kind of been his own person. So let's see that. This so 
And he's also never really, um, he's all, always been more interested in his own power than, uh, or his own you know, advancement than anything else. So yeah. let's see if any of those things are showing themselves. And so sorry, since you actually know him, the stuff with the wife, she's had bad influence, right? I don't know a ton about her. I, I, she, I, would about, say I, I, I don't know so much about bad, but she's a she's a, a she's a she's a seditious Terrible. traitor. <laughs> she's a seditious traitor to the United States. Okay, so yeah. That's a bad <laughs> influence. Um, and so is he. And so is he. They both are. They're both seditious traitors. Um, so let's let's give a look here. So yes, indeed, the wife would be important. Well, the wife would have an important and undue influence. I that think makes, she has, right? Because she was like, yeah, involved with the, like the, whatever you call it, the storming of the... Oh, she was, she's turning out to be one of the major culprits. Yeah, you know, exactly. She, exactly. Um, yeah, they have an email of hers. She she bought bus, she bought a bus or something for people to come in. No, Jenny Thomas is, Jenny Thomas is a very, very dangerous person. Scumbag. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to read this. One yeah. thing I noticed right off the bat is Jupiter and its house of joy and its domicile. Hmm. Which to me doesn't necessarily speak to him being skilled, but him having run into good luck with groups of people in terms of advancement. Patronage. The eleventh house is yes. patronage. Jupiter is your patron. He's pa he was pa he had patrons. Yeah. You know he was patronized. I mean, you you don't get you don't become a Supreme Court justice without handlers and patrons, right? Because you're going to do what they you're there because you're going to do what they say. You're I mean you're essentially. You're getting this position of power, but you're being positioned in by someone else, by a, by a group of other people, or or by whatever. I mean, think about the six new justices or the three new justices that came in during Trump's period. Almost all of those people were patron. Um, the, the, their patrons were the Federalist Society, right? So that would be their eleventh house. So we can see that with this eleventh house this 11th house and maybe the retrogradation shows that it might not be such an up and up person that the people might not be so up and up that there's a waywardness to whoever is is doing the patronage or sponsoring or sponsorship um, I, have, I have to ask something here what's that uh is this mercury chasm because the sun is at 227 and Mercury is retrograde, but at 231. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, what house is this? Uh, also, is, uh, is, would, would Venus be considered Casimir? Because again, the, no, it, it, it wouldn't be Casimir. No, no, no. Venus wouldn't be, but Mercury is, right? With the sun, right? What are you looking at? Venus is Mercury. not Casimir. Yeah, Venus sun. is not Casimir. Yeah, Mercury is. Yeah. Mercury is. Okay, no. which also, I guess, kind of makes sense. Well, Mercury is. Um, I think. I think it kind of makes sense uh, because what I was looking at, I was looking at. I know this isn't Placidus, but I was looking at to the whole signs. Ninth house. And, uh, yeah, and uh, and Virgo would be ruling the ninth house, and the ruler of the ninth house, which means is Casimi, and he's the Supreme Court justice. Absolutely, but remember, judges is what. So, what planet rules judges? Uh, Jupiter. 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 So it's, but yeah. it's still, but it still works. Because well, he's got the highest people. position in the land because right. Jupiter yeah. is and so, pretty. And the, so and the sun with the with the Mercury, which is the lawyer. <laughs> so also the yeah. MC MC Mercury Mars rule. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being annoyed with him, but to me that seems like he's he uses his power in like a menacing way. Like it's Mars, Mars in the eighth. Well, here, the here's one of the things. I mean. He's it's ruling over life and past, death. <laughs> it's only in the past maybe four years, five years, that he has been considered a person of any consequence at all on mm -hmm. the on the, the bench. He has been known for like the past 20 or 30 years for never asking questions. So you just for vote not, the party line? That's right, like his well, but, but I mean, you know, but not asking any questions, never asking clarif clarifying questions, just kind of writing, exact kind of doing what you said, but like he has never, it's only as we move into this era of, of a chaos, of kind of, of chaos and this attempted kind of takeover that his profile has really been raised in this malefic way. He was always considered like this. He was basically pure token, like pure, pure yeah, token. But like, dude, I feel like inaction is, 
isn't it just as I don't know maybe it's not as bad but like I don't give people a free pass for not it's oh, no, worse no, no, that's if not you're my, doing things uninformed that's <laughs> not my point no no my point is not that my point is that it's never been an exercise of power got it yes no it, it but the up. effect has been but the effect of his actions Oh, absolutely. No, the, my, so, yeah, my point is that, as, but it's the people, it's the Jupiter in the 11th with the power. He's a, he is basically a puppet of the Jupiter in the 11th. But ever since Trump has become president, his profile has raised, not because of the quality of what he's done, but because he's, you know, he's been a company man for such a long time. So, so I guess my point in that is that he he was kind of this, uh, shall we say, ceremonial. He was kind of this ceremonial uh, appointment, who was of no consequence except to do exactly what he was told. And then all of a sudden, as we move further and further on, twenty five years later, all of a sudden his star s- seems to be rising, but you know not in any good way. He's you know star seems to be rising mostly because of his wife which is I find very interesting, like you say, so mostly, once again, because of his wife. And so what is the marriage like? What, so what would we say that the marriage is like? <laughs> Ruler of the Ascendant in the seventh with Pluto, Leo? What's it like? Yeah, what's the marriage? She's, like? she's authoritarian. The... She's the boss. Yeah. There's issues of control. Um, yeah, maybe some misan- misanthropy, like you said, misanthropic. Remember, she was a Mooney. She was she a was? She, she was a Mooney. Ew, what? She was. She is. She was. I think she might have been more in one cult, but she was. She was a Mooney for years. She oh was God. really big in the moon in the Mooney cult. And you know, Abe Shinzo, who just got murdered. He was involved with Unification Church. That's how. That's why he was just assassinated. Was because somebody's mother was involved with the Unification Church, and he was involved with it. You had to do. Excuse me, with Unification Church. Unification Church was connected with the Moonies. But I didn't know the um, what is it? Former Prime Minister in Japan had did anything to do with that. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Look up if you look up Nippon Kaigi, um, oh Unification Church, and Unit Seven Thirty One. That motherfucker. He's like he was like Trump before Trump. Abe Shinzo, that fucker. I should have picked a hero. I don't know why I did this, but I was it was on. It's been, he's been on my mind lately. Who uh, Clarence Mr. Thomas? Or Mr. Thomas, yeah, or just like all the scumbag uh, Supreme Court justices. So the ruler of the seventh is the moon in Aquarius. What is the moon doing? Is she applying to anything? Let's see. She's at the very beginning of her sign. Looks like applying to the. Well, nobody. Well, no, to the ascendant, but kind of why? No, she's separating from the ascendant. Why does it say A then under the? The ascendant's a twenty-five Capricorn. No, I agree with you in terms of the way it looks, but the why is it labeled like that? Labeled like what, honey? Well, it says it says whether it's an applying or separating aspect under the. Um, it'll have an A or an S in the aspectarian. Let's see here, moon A. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, right. Well, Whatever. <laughs> Seeing is believing. I believe you. I don't know. It says like a six A or something. I don't know or six. I don't know, whatever that is. But no, it's definitely leaving it. It's not going anywhere. Oh, maybe because the the ascendant is going towards the moon. Oh, the, the ascendant, ascendant is applying, is to, the applying moon. to the moon. Because mm-hmm, it's the fastest point in the chart. Got it. Okay. Okay, okay so the, the ascendant will apply to her. Um. Yeah, it is the oh. So does that only mean, Apple connection is to Neptune? Oh, that's then that means then. And so the only thing she's going to do is sextile Jupiter. Oh wait, she'll try and she'll uh, she'll oppose Saturn, and then she'll sextile Jupiter. So she's not doing anything until n- nineteen degrees and twenty nine minutes. So she's feral. This chart. So this chart. This chart is feral. Um, until it gets to where this moon is feral. So even that says th- this moon is feral. Moon is ruler of the seventh house of the wife. Moon f- being feral is what? It's not going to make another aspect? Well, moon it's not making, it's it's in a, I'll just say she's in a feral part of the of her cycle. 
right? Because she just started in Aquarius and she's not going to touch anybody until 19 degrees. Got it. That's feral. So it's different than void, of course, because she's not going to change signs. Until void, yeah, she exactly. Because okay. void, of course, is after you is when she's finished. Got it. With all of her applications. And then she's not going to do anything else. This is when she's not touching anybody. Now, she would be truly feral if she weren't touching anybody for the entire sign. But she's feral until this particular thing. So even that, I mean, that on some level, that kind of this feral, this ferality of the moon, I don't know if that's actually a word, um, on some level shows, in my opinion, kind of the lack of connectedness to the civil rights movement and, yeah. and, Afri and other African-Americans. And, and you know, the, 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 uh, the, ah, the, but the person has feelings but they're not attached to other people. Right, other because teams. remember remember what we learned about the moon is that when she's that, in order for her to be stable, she needs to be in relationship with somebody. Wait, so she, I think she needs what she said, which is that the only application she sees is to Neptune. I think it's true. I'm looking at Aspectarian. It's true, but it's wide. It's like a nine degree. Where are we? No, scroll. Yeah. Except that, I mean, I'll use, I mean, I won't, I don't use them in the applications and separations, but obviously she's applying to the Neptune. I mean, she's, you know, in some kind of trying to the Neptune, but I don't know if that, you know, what, what, what or not. And of course the Neptune's in the ninth there. So that might be. Exactly though, which means to convoluted belief systems. Ah, okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Or whatever you see it, Shanice, please type in. You're very knowledgeable. I no, know. no. I mean, <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm 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 fine. I'm speculating just like you all are. Yeah, we're playing. This is fun. Um is the Mars squaring the Jupiter? Is Mars squaring Jupiter? Yeah. Oh, Eight yeah, degree, yeah. no, six degrees applying. And oh, and it's a return of virtue too. Wait, wait, it is? It Hold is. on. Mars, Jupiter. Jupiter. Jupiter's retrograde. Yeah. <laughs> Which means yeah. that then the Mars, so the Jupiter isn't helping the Mars. Now the Mars is the 10th house. Now what is, oh wait, the, but it's a, it's a return of virtue with what? With detriment? Fitness. Oh. With fitness. It's with fitness because they're both in, in, they're both in succeeding houses. So the oh. Mars can, so the Mars can still do it. But I thought it, Okay. Does it matter? Sorry, I don't know the technical terms. So I'm just going to ask it. Um, that uh, Virgo is not a good sign for Jupiter. It doesn't yeah, matter. I mean that that does that. That's another consider. That's a different. Okay. okay sorry. Leave, leave it aside. That's a different consideration, because ultimately, remember the 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 tenth house is the house of reputation. So that means that the house of reputation is applying to Jupiter, which is the greater benefic and in his, own, in his own sign and in his own joy, which should be very, very useful for the person's reputation. What kind of reputation does Clarence Thomas have? I mean, you're going to say not good, but I would say in terms of position he's attained, if you're working in law, he that's has a it. great position. Yeah. Does he have show. a great reputation? No. I mean, a, another example of that is Donald Trump. Donald Trump had a great position as the president. Does Donald Trump have a good reputation? Anyone? Donald Trump does not have, he does not have a good reputation. He achieved a high position, 10th house, one aspect of the 10th house, but he has a terrible reputation, another aspect of the 10th house. As an Aquarius moon, I will bet my bottom dollar on the fact that she is emotionally detached, preferring to care in a logical way. In her case with Saturn and Leo being the dispositor, she is self-serving and narcissistic. I would agree. Yes, I would agree, 100%. <clears throat> Saturn and Leo. Extremely dispositor. Okay, okay, of the moon there, okay. And extremely controlling. Yeah, I mean, that's the vibe. It seems like she has them on a leash. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, see the, so I mean, when once again, when we look at these aspects around houses, the houses are often 
involving themselves in more than one area, right? We tend to just think of the 10th house as career, but the 10th house is also our, repu our public reputation, the works by which we are known. And we've already shown in different videos that it's not really the 10th house that shows us what career we go into, right? Have we seen any chart where only the 10th house, by looking only at the 10th house, we were able to see the person's career? Maybe only Ella Fitzgerald's chart. That's a good point. I never thought of it, ne of it necessarily as what you do. I think of it as if you die and someone remembers you, it's what they remember you for. Uh, and someone's going to remember him as being a scumbag. That's supposedly in the fifth house, what you remember for after death. Really? Mm -hmm. I think it's shown. I actually think it's shown here. But he's still alive. No, I mean, what he'll be known for. Yeah, that's it. But what he's known for alive, what he's known, what he'll be known for after death is a different thing. I mean, or maybe more of the same. But what he's known for during life. I mean, interesting. So if we look at it this way, what are the three? Does anybody remember what the three triplicity rulers of the tenth house represent? This would be a good, a good like a jumping off off point for oh tenth God. house. No idea. Hold on a second. I'm gonna. You still have a screenshot of this. I lost it. Do you use Dorothy and Trip like the Renaissance? Do you have a list we could <laughs> steal from you? A list of what, honey? Of of these, the, the various sort of meanings of the triplicity rulers. Oh yeah, ho hold on a second. Because there are like various ones, right? Like I feel like third of third of the twelfth is like how you die, and like what is tenth? I mean, it has to do with like how you're seen. The third of the twelfth does not have to do with how you die. Third of the twelfth has to do with enemies, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Oh, maybe it's because ruler of the. Oh, maybe it's eighth, which mine is. The either way, the it's and the twelfth planets of rulers, prisons, and prison. That's twelfth house. Okay, so the so we're looking at the tenth house, and then we're going to go back to the chart. The first rule of the triplicity of the kingly house rules work exaltations and the elevation to a higher seat of authority and to the highest dwelling. Okay, so that would be the first triplicity ruler. That's the first planet. The second would signify the voice of command and audacity in the same. And the third signifies the stability and durability. Now let's go back to the chart and assess that. Okay, so... Okay, so the first triplicity ruler... So first of all, what's the sign on the cusp? It's... It's Scorp, no? Scorpio. So the and is it day or night? I am um, I don't know. He is born during the day, no? Oh, hold on a second. He is born. What makes you think he's born during the day? Oops, no, sorry, nighttime. Because <laughs> it has to be above the horizon, right? For That's it to be a right. day chart between seven and 12. So underneath it's a night chart. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, so we're flipping the two. Okay, so water sign, triplicity ruler, Venus is numero uno. Venus is numero uno. Okay, so that would represent... Exaltations, work exaltations, and the elevation to a higher seat of authority. So, do we think that works? Where's the Venus? In Cancer. Is she retrograde too? Yeah. Oh. That's not very cute. And she's, also, and she's also combust. That doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. No, but it what doesn't. Happened, but what would happen if we changed it? Okay. And we used. Cap, we use Libra as the 10th house cusp. Who would it be then? Well, first of all, wait a minute. It's nighttime, so we wouldn't be using Venus. No, I thought Venus, oh, one and two for night. <gasps> sorry, I thought it was two we and wouldn't three. Be using I Venus. thought you flipped night and participating. I'm so sorry. So it's Mars. Mars would be first. But that still doesn't really make much sense. But Mars is applying to the Jupiter. 
even uh-huh. though it's return of fitness with with even though it's a return of fitness with fitness he's still applying to benefic i love return <laughs> of fitness it sounds like something you do at a gym <laughs> um so i mean that can maybe do it see this is what i'm saying some of these these things with these triplicity rulers i'm not and then okay so then venus would be the second triplicity ruler which would be the voice of command and the audacity of the same. What's there one, we go. <laughs> what's one of the things that I just said about him? That he has no voice of command. He has no voice. Venus is in a mute sign. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. And he's also too overpowered by the sun. If in Over, theory you could see the sun. And as overpowered like, by the sun, exactly. Yeah. And then, okay, then the next thing would be the, oh, the durability of it. How durable is it? Which would be moon. Moon, yeah. How durable? I mean, she Very. doesn't love the sign. Very. She loves the house, yeah. Very. <laughs> oh, because it's fixed. fixed. Is that why? It's in ah, a fixed okay. sign and it's in okay. the first house. Okay, okay. Very. No, it's, it, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be in a good in a good sign. It just, I mean, it's just, we know that if anything, the durability is the most, is the strongest in this chart. Yeah. Given, you get that you position, given a lifetime life. appointment. Yeah. He can be a Supreme Court justice as long as he wants. And we know also here that this person does not have an exalted reputation, even though he has an exalted position. He has an exalted position or he's been put into an exalted position, but he was put by someone else. He was put there by someone else. In most cases, it looks like consistently he's put by someone else. He's in Saturn in the seventh, the ruler of the ascendant in the seventh, other people, ruler of the seventh and the first. Other people, it's it's how it's what other people. So this person, maybe that's why it's not they don't have an exalt they're not considered it's not considered a really exalted position mind you even though it is ninth house remember this would be the full this would be considered the actual ninth right and Garth, could you sorry go ahead. i'm sorry go ahead would you take i was just thinking if you could see his treatment of anita hill on the chart and that if the position of either venus or mars would bear on that i don't know if you, if you can see it at all just like his his I, I, guess think maybe, if, yeah. I think if anything, this moon in Aquarius and Saturn and Leo would also show a misanthrope. Okay. This is someone who might not really care about other people, like the coldness that Shanice mentioned um, about her. He, This is a cold fish. Got think, it. So that's the deal. It's not like that it would show what he does. It shows that like if he does something, he's not going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. He just kind of does it. Yeah, this is a cold fish that probably doesn't care very much about other people. I'm so glad he is on the Supreme Court. Yeah, and and as a result, I mean, you know, look at look, you know, the 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 moon is in the first house, you know, so there might be even a glorification of women, you know, like a worship, but not in any kind of real, you know. But look at how the Venus is in the sixth and retrograde and combust, you know. So this person might not really. You know, they say they're best friends. This person might not really know love. Him and the wife? Yeah, that's one of the things that they say. About, I mean, of course it could be bullshit, but they say that they yeah. are, but, but it is said about them that they are best friends. I really don't know about her, but I will say she gives off heavy white supremacist vibes. Oh yeah, well, heavy, heavy, dangerous, heavy misery, <laughs> heavy Stephen King's misery vibes. Totally no, but like to be married to a bl- I don't know, like there's something, I would say like particularly weird. Something amiss. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a chart forward, and you guys are gonna tell me what you think. Okay. Talk to me about this chart. Oh, another Aquarius moon. (laughs) Well, first of all, no one's talking, but first of all, 
tell me what you're seeing. What's what's angular? Start with the things that we would be usually doing. What's angular? What's succeeding? What's cadent? So what's advancing? Mercury. Mercury's advancing. Venus. Jupiter is advancing. Moon. Venus. Uh -huh. Jupiter. Moon. Mm -hmm. You've got a Casimir Venus. Yeah. In Cancer, but in the. Wait, wait. We're using sort of the five. Oh, but even five degrees. If you're reading Placidus, it's in the 12th still. Nope, I would use, I'd be using eight. You use eight degrees. Okay, so we're reading them as in the first house. Okay, so that's important. I mean, it's important either way, but it's better. Eight for angles, five for K, for um, succeeding, three for K. Harsh. All right. Christopher, anything? Oh, kid, <laughs> figures. Um, and I'm sure that's probably why Shanice hasn't said anything either. You probably got you got something going on with the kids too. Don't be intimidated. Hey, so you actually weren't, Shanice wasn't here when I said it, but it is so important to be okay with being wrong. I'm not 100% right all the damn time, but I can always back up what I say with what I with, with I can always tell you why I said what I said that's all that matters all right I'm just gonna throw one out there then this person had um shall we say maybe problematic home life or maybe issues asserting themselves <laughs> absolutely no issue asserting themselves okay maybe too much but I'm just looking at Mars in the fourth in Libra in, in depth in depression in this fall yeah, not not at all, um, um, and and not uh, no problems in their uh, in home life that I know of. See, it's fun to be wrong, you guys. Join me; it can be okay. So, what does that say then? Oh, well, I guess you know who it is. So, mm -hmm. Oh no, you don't know who it is either. Do I know you? who it is. Oh, you do. Okay. This is me. This is me working, helping you. This is me. Okay. Yeah, this is me testing y'all. So There's I still no think it's problem. important, though. Wait, 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 Christopher, what were you saying? I just see uh, like Mars in its detriment in the fourth. No, no problems at all at home. Um, <laughs> exactly, uh, my dude. <laughs> not, well, I, I won't say no problems. That well, certainly no problems asserting. Yeah, but asserting could be bad things, right? What house <laughs> does Mars rule? What houses do Mars rule? Five. And then the and where's yeah. Aries? Nothing. Five and ten. <laughs> <laughs> so what else could the fourth house what else could the fourth house represent with the ruler of the tenth and the fourth the tenth and the fifth the ruler of the tenth of this chart is in the fourth but you think, okay because mars also rules the tenth jupiter and mars both rules the rule the tenth Okay. But sorry, doesn't Mars, isn't Scorpio on the fifth cusp? It is. Okay. So fifth and tenth. So tell me something. What does the fourth house represent? Home. Okay. Ancestry. Home. What? So parents. So, say that again. Like parents. parents. Yeah, but home. Stick with home. If the rule of the tenth was in the fourth, home spiritual or home with a lot of smoke and mirrors, Mercury conjunct Neptune. Um, oh, Mercury conjunct Neptune. Stay with that, Shanice. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's it's another word that I use all the time for home for for Neptune. Lies. Stick with home. Not no, not lies. Stick with home. So if if the rule of the tenth represents the kind of career, you know, people are saying it's the career we go into or whatever. So if we were to think of the ruler of the 10th as the career we go into, and it was in the fourth house, what, what career would we go into? What, interior decorator? 
That would be close. What else? Real estate. Real estate. This person was a real estate agent. Ah, okay. Real estate agent. Started as a real estate agent. Note that Venus rules the fourth too. Libra is intercepted in the fourth. So that means that this Kazimi Venus rules the fourth. And Mars is there. And Mars. So there's like, they're good at something and there's something I think tainting it personally. Seems like maybe they lost, lost money um, speculating on property or something. <laughs> Very good. Very good proper so the, this whole this person's life is about property and and money and they're indeed why why it, it wasn't about they didn't lose their money speculating on property but they did lose money they did lose money how what what happened why did they lose money swindle nope note where the part of fortune and the moon are Eighth house. So what does that often mean? What are the things that we tend to connect with the eighth house besides death? death? Taxes. Taxes. So he lost money with his taxes? Ah, he lost money because he didn't. It's Come not on. what's his name, right? Hold nope, on. not Bernie Madoff. It's a female. No, no, no. Older. Who's that guy who they caught because he with his tax records? Oh, um, Al Capone. No, this is a female. It's female, okay. This is not a gangster's chart. So we've got tax, we've got a loss of money as a result of taxes. Now, what else does this eighth house imply? We've got the moon and the part of fortune in the eighth. What else does that imply? Now we know wills and all that other stuff, but we're not talking about wills. There's something else that the eighth house represents. Life, death, taxes, matters of life or death. I don't really know much else about the eighth. It's it. Hidden stuff. That's not what I'm looking for. What were you saying, Christopher? I'm gonna say dead. Right. Let me pull now, up double holding said, on the side here. What if I said, <laughs> think of it from a perspective of Derivative houses. Oh, sex. Nope. Well, what is it? Second from the seventh. Second from the seventh, which is what? Your your kids? Ew. No, no, no. Re resources Our of your resources. spouse. The partner was money well. Be your partner's money. Yeah. Your husband's money. This person made their money, made most of their important money through their husband. Hmm. Now, what kind of person do we think this person is? Cancer, cancer rising is generally, um, you know, a bit shy, <laughs> a little bit secretive. That'd be cool. I get vibes that the person gives off shows more empathy than they actually feel. No. <laughs> so this is a really great chart for a lot of the things that I talk about. And one of the things that I talk about all the time is that we have to know what the planets mean as planets, simply as planets. And what I want to draw your attention to is the Sun Venus Casimi on the ascendant there. Now, what house does the Sun rule? The Sun rules the Two. second house. Now, aside from that, what does the sun represent? Everything. Mm, no, but but specific. No, literally, it gives life. Yes, but aside from that, 
vitality, like um, where you shine. <laughs> it's okay. it's where you're moving towards. If moon is reflexes, sun is what you're actually is like your goals in life, who you're trying to become. Okay, so that's that's what what say say again. I would say your your ideal, your spirit. Oh, these are so funny. These are all so modern. The sun yeah. rules gold. The sun rules luxuries. Even, what about Venus or Jupiter? And Why Venus does it just rules jewelry and mm -hmm. things of value? This person is extremely materialistic. The sun is the ruler of the second house. The sun is arrogance. This person was this okay I, 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 I probably may have never heard of this person before this is a woman by the name of leona helmsley oh my god who hasn't heard of leona helmsley okay you've heard of leona helmsley then the the, the hotel queen no i was just expecting to see more six house present didn't she leave like a million dollars to her dog oh did she yeah but, but, but she, psychotic she, involving a small animal and she, and she inherited a one billion dollars from her husband yeah okay and okay. she was LH. called the hotel queen she's the hospitality queen the moon is hospitality the moon and jupiter are hospitality notice that the moon and jupiter are opposing each other and they're on the and on the uh, part of fortune and on the first seventh axis of the part of fortune which would involve the husband um because he was the hotel person she was a she was a star re uh, uh, real estate agent and she met her husband who was this huge um, you know, property mogul. And she was such a good, she herself was so good at the business that she expanded his business. You talked, um, Kabira, you talked about uh, her being very good at something. She was really, really good at, at the property business. Her nickname is the queen of me. The queen of me. There's the sun. Mean, like mean. asshole. <laughs> she was totally, yeah, she was, a, and see, there's this Aquarius moon. And she was investigated and co co convicted of federal income tax evasion. I knew there was an Al Capone link. <laughs> federal income tax. You were no, you were right. You were you you were correct when you said taxes. Um, yeah. So we. But my point about this was that if we're looking at okay, getting it wrong is. Oh, I had a dance teacher that used to say, we learn more from the things that we get wrong than from the things that we get right, or the things that go wrong than from the things that, that go right. We learn from what goes wrong, which is why I'm, I'm in, you know, trying to get you to just go ahead and be wrong. But what was important about you being wrong, especially about being more empathetic than they seem, uh-huh because she wasn't she's known for being an asshole the meanest one of the meanest you know the, yeah you know, just one of the coldest hearted bitches in the fucking universe well how do you see that to me Venus well, cancer does not you, show up no, because you spent too much time looking at the sign and not enough time looking at the planet Right, you looked at cancer. You looked at the sun and cancer, and you th even Pat, um, even Christopher did it. Oh, this person's shy and blah blah blah. I looked at cancer, and it's like, mm -mm, what the fuck? This moon is an Aquarius. This person. Well, that's what I was saying. I think there's a disconnect between Venus moon, Venus sun, and moon. That's yeah, what I said. I think the Venus kind of sun is being, inside. but you saw the Venus sun is being a mitigator. The sun is arrogance. Got it. It's air. Okay. The sun Wait, is what is air. Venus in this? It's like desire to acquire property, like a, a venal. In luxury? The word is venal. Oh, got it. Venal. Remember, Venus is the desire and appetite planet. She yep. is greedy. She is the greed. Venality and greed. This person was arrogant, venal, and greedy. And heart of ice. Even all the Mercury, look, the Mercury's in Leo the Mer and the Jupiter's in Leo, all the Mercury. See that this, so the Casimir Venus, in my opinion, is, it just showed, it's kind of like, uh, most convinced that Virgo is one of the most detached and calculated signs in the Zodiac with Saturn and Virgo. Mm. It can certainly be detached. It's cold and dry, just like Saturn. Very analytical too. I feel like if there's a fault finding sign, it's Virgo. Oh, absolutely. It's it's about, well, because it's about putting things in their place. Yeah. 
But just right. by the way, I just think this is an interesting factoid, but also kind of scary. Her trust now valued at five billion was one of her trusts bequeathed to be used to the benefit her dogs. Wow. Ruler of the sixth in, in the, the second. second. Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. Well, she didn't like people. She was horrible to people. Finds its joy in the first. Um, I would put this Mercury in the second. It's within two degrees of the second cusp. It's not in the first. Which All I guess talent. also, again, though, makes sense that like her her communicative ability was used to further resources. Right. And Mercury is money. Mercury is already money. It's already mercantile by nature. Yes. Right. Mercury yes. is money and Hold counting. On. Right. So this person spent all of their time counting, counting their pennies. Well, they, all they cared about was how much, how much gold they had amassed. All right. Let's move to the next chart. Well done, everybody. That was very well done. Don't be afraid to be wrong. Right. Because it's because what happened is. <gasps> Sorry. I'm just reading about Leona Holmesley. No. She's because crazy. Was, say that again. She's nuts. Or she was, excuse me. There was like water spilled over the saucer of a teacup. She was having breakfast with Alan Dershowitz, another douchebag. She fucker. picks up the cup and, and smashes it on the floor and then tells the waiter to beg for his job. Mm -hmm. Horrible person. Like Kathy Battle. Yeah, like actually bad. I was way off the mark. Yeah, totally. Yeah, see, important. And see, it doesn't matter that you were wrong. It's important that you were wrong. Yeah. Right, it's important now to look at that sun Venus and say, oh, I'm no longer going to say, oh, yeah, that must be lovely. Yeah, or that ascendant in cancer necessarily means that you're going to be warm and cuddly. Right. It's not but necessarily how you come off. It's like what you want and how you go after it. Right. And also the thing is, nobody took into consideration that the sun was the ruler of the second. Ah. See? And that Venus is already what we find valuable and what we desire. This person is, is obsessed with luxury and gold and lucre. This person is obsessed with money. Got the Pluto there too. Stakes are fucking high as fuck for this person. Always. Everything has to... They have to have the most. The, I mean, yeah, this this would be uh, really, really, and that moon, ugh. and see, in this particular case, that Jupiter isn't helping the moon. Jupiter rules the sixth and the ninth and tenth in this chart, right? So not really helping. Okay, on to the next chart. Okay, who's advancing? Who's angular? Who's what? Mercury's yes. angular. Mercury. Sun. Yeah, Sun's on the midheaven. Sun. What else Venus and looking? moon. Venus and moon in the 11th. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and then the Mars. Now, note that this chart has a B rating. One of the reasons I brought this chart out is because I wanted to see if any of the things that you come up with match, if this chart is really the right chart. It doesn't have an A rating or an AA rating. Mm. This is, is this person an, like an artist or performer of some kind? No. Love the public bad reputation. Love the public bad reputation. Love the public. Yes. Bad reputation, yes and no. Now, bad reputation, 10th. Yes and no. Yeah, okay, okay. Tell me something. Why did you say love the public, Shanice? The moon is the public. Oh, because Venus is with the moon? The moon is the public? That's why I asked about the artist stuff. Venus in the 11th with the moon, love public acknowledgement. Oh, wait, that's different from, oh, loved by the public. Oh, sorry. I, I, this person, um, so yes and no. 
Yes and no. Loved, yes, loved, yes, loved and hated by the public. Yes, good and bad reputation. And yes, loved the public. Even, even though I read that incorrectly, themselves they loved the public. Saturn and eighth, bad reputation. Only with some. At this point, now when we talk about the person's reputation in death, this person has a fantastic reputation after death, a posthumous reputation. But while alive, they were a lightning rod for good and bad. How is this person with money? Do you know anything about that? I do. Um, well, I... I, well, what 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 do you think? And then for, first, and then I'll okay. So sorry, I just see I see Saturn in the eighth and Mars in the second. Mm -hmm. and those are the sort of the money, like oh yeah, you see basically the calamity the calamity um, configuration in the second and eighth house. Yeah, the axis makes me think: was there an issue with money? Did they spend or they? I don't know. You know, it's really interesting. I would say that there was not. I would say that as far as their finances were concerned, that the finances were very publicly involved. This might be a place, you know what? Now this might be, this might be the key to figuring out if this is the right chart, because that's a really good observation you just made. Because Mars, this is, remember I said I, I had a reading and I wasn't sure if the chart was right. And one of the things that the chart, one of the things that I saw in the chart I knew needed to show up, it was Mars Saturn opposition. And in this particular case, the Mars Saturn opposition was affecting the fourth house. So I think it was in the fourth and 10th or something like that, but it was affecting the fourth house. And so all of that stuff affected this person's father. Now, Mars rules what houses, first of all? It rules the 12th, which is hidden enemies. The 7th. The 10th, the 7th, the 8th. Wait, rules by exaltation the 10th? Uh, Saturn rules the 8th. Saturn rules yeah. the 10th. Yeah. I'm doing the whole, I'm doing the whole. Oh, I got it. Sorry, both of them. I got you. Yeah, I'm doing the whole opposition. So that Mars rules the 12th. Saturn rules the uh, uh, ni the ninth and tenth. Mars rules the seventh and twelfth. Saturn rules the ninth and tenth. So that we should be seeing this war happening. I wonder something. See, I, this is the exact reason that I did it was because in many ways this chart makes a lot of sense. I'm going to come back to one to this. Uh, I'm going to put your your question on hold for a second, because it leads us to a larger issue that I wanted to address. But I want to ask about the ascendant and the ascendant ruler. What do we, what do we come, what, 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 what kind of message do we get from this ascendant ruler? Besides what Shanice said, loved by the public. Well, exalted in Pisces, no? Mm -hmm. So what would, what, what would be, what would exalt this person? They're, well, it's con conjunct the moon. Mm -hmm. So I guess they're known, those are the two sort of feminine appetitive planets mm -hmm. and feminine. I, and moon too is like feelings. What? Yes. I don't know. I'm just throwing out keywords now. <laughs> well, moon and Venus are both the rulers of the ascendant. So this, this is talking about who the person is intrinsically. Who is the person intrinsically? beauty they looked good i mean it didn't look bad but they weren't known for physical beauty what would they no. be known for what would they be known for what would what would be looking at this chart what would be a thing this person would be known for where would we look for that tenth, tenth house right we'd be looking for tenth house to know what a person is known for so it's Saturn ruled. Yeah. Saturn's in the eighth in and Sag. Who's and who's there? Intelligence, yes. Huh. Uh-huh. What else? So what else does Mercury rule? Mercury and Aquarius, I said. What else does Mercury rule? 
Mercury rules sort of um, business, like mercant, like sales. Mm -hmm. He does. He sort what of Mercury used to sell. Used? What is Mercury used to sell? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Anything. A sa mm, salesman has the gift of what? Gab. Yeah, it's a good speaker. This person speaks. See, this or is writes. my point. This is my point. If there's too much focus on modern understanding of astrology, we can't do this other type. Wait, why? Now, what was the problem with the, what? Because we forget that Mercury rules the tongue. Mercury is speech. Mercury's well, Mercury is always involved with communication. But we didn't say communicate, but I didn't ask you. I but remember, but but I didn't say it, but that didn't come up. It was all these other things that came up. Mercury is speech, and Mercury is the ruler of the second house of the voice. Mm, but Mars is also there, retrograde. So making a forceful speech? Maybe. That's what I don't get. Is I feel like there's multiple sort of interpretations that are always possible. Does That's it make for more force, forceful speech, or does it create a speech impediment? I feel like you could, in theory, argue either one. I mean, you know the chart. I don't, but like... Definitely not a speech impediment. Yeah. But remember this this is a rating B chart so this might not be the right chart. Okay. I mean but the signs wouldn't change except for no not even the moon cuz it's halfway there. What would happen is the houses might change. If it's 6 hours if this is a this chart is 6 hours wrong the moon will will go to 24 22 or 23 degrees the moon the moon will move. The okay. Moon will be closer to the square of Saturn. Mhm. Mm so you're saying gift of gab. This person is known for speech, for their speech, speech. in the eighth and ninth house. They they speak about no way. What? Like really? No. Yes. No, that doesn't make sense. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What 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 planet rules religion? Neptune. The sun rules religion. The sun is God. Sun and it's in the God house of religion. House is God. This is yeah. what I'm saying. If we know what these planets really mean that have nothing to do with our behavior, right? If we, right. Really, if we really know exactly what these significations are, then we can start to, then we just go down the list. So Mercury and Aquarius, Saturn ruled signs. So it's ruling over the ninth and the 10th belief systems, the sun is there. So they're sort of some sort of religious speaker, like you said. Mm -hmm. And then. So what, so then what kind of work did the person do? This person was a. What, like a. Not a fraudulent religious figure. Someone said, "Was they were they a fraudulent religious figure?" Looking at that Saturn in the eighth. <coughs> no, I don't think fraudulent, but like. Hmm. But this person is a religious figure. This person is a minister. Yeah, but a famous one. A famous minister. Why? Why famous? Look at the eleven. And look at the ten. But but th th this th but this minister is loved for something very specific. Okay, okay. So what are they loved for? Where else is? Okay, this is an observation. It's just kind of a question. We have a lot of planets in Pisces here, and then like you know. Uranus will kind of leave alone. Um, moon and Venus. And then Saturn is in the other Jupiter ruled planet. And then Jupiter itself is in the 12th in Taurus. I don't know. Working with the impoverished, ruler of the sixth and the 11th. I like that. Okay. Um, that, that is, um, that it includes that, but is not, it is not specific to that. I, 
almost wonder, I almost wonder if this might be better as a Gemini rising chart. I'm gonna, anybody have any other observations about this? This is a difficult chart to figure out. I mean, it's a difficult- I think this, pro this person too, also too, I think there's a little too much of a good thing. Talking. I think this, I think he might, I think, or she might have issues sort of same as I do, like moon Venus together. There's, what's, what's the deal? And then hold on, fifth Mercury up there what do we know about the does this person known for anything to do with sex yes yeah so this person was known for having affairs later later in life not during life but was okay. known for having multiple affairs was married but known for having multiple affairs great such as life but after life after death the mars saturn between the two and the eight is interesting seems like maybe something happened involving eighth house um, eighth house in what way? Death. Mm hmm. How? Um, so, what kind of? Wait, so maybe he limited death, Saturn in the eighth? Was mm -hmm. he some sort of like activist? He was an activist. What did you say? Limited death? Is that what you said? <laughs> Saturn in the eighth. Like he tried to prevent people maybe from being killed. Um, not necessarily from being killed, but he tried to prevent people from being something. Something, something. What is the something? Or rather, he, he did the opposite of trying to prevent. What, he actively encouraged people to be something? Mm-hmm. What is that something? To be... What's well, Mercury in the Aquarius free? Yes. Independent minded. Okay. Free, free. Okay, we're getting to it. This is Martin Luther King. Ah, <laughs> uh, MK, Christ. So that's yeah, he did have a lot of affairs. Although like I've actually Mars. read also that that, that that was propaganda. It's interesting that Mars is in Gemini and then, you know, Mercury is in the 10th and then an opposition with Saturn in the 8th. So maybe killed for his. outspokenness yes killed for the outspokenness assassinated he was definitely assassinated um what i think is interesting is that the ruler of the 12th is in this is in the well it's in the natural second <clears throat> okay so you see how basically the second house, the third house becomes, or the third house becomes there. I used to have this whole thing about how the part of fortune was in the natural third house, which is actually the 12th from the fourth. And the 12th from the fourth would be the bad demon or the evil spirit of a country. And what Martin Luther King did was he fought the evil spirit of the United States. And so, which makes me wonder if either Aries rising may make more sense or Aquarius rising makes more sense. I mean, especially noticing that Mars, one of the things that's so interesting about this chart is that Mars is retrograde and Martin Luther King staked his entire life on nonviolence and Mars is violence. And Mars is in this opposition with Saturn. Of course, it's a um, it's a return of virtue. It's not even really a return of virtue because there's no application. But it's the Mars Saturn opposition. The Saturn would already restrict the violence, and then the Mars retrograde would turn him away from any kind of violence of that nature. And all of the violence would be done. All of the challenge or combat would be done verbally. I, I mean, on some level, this does make sense because if, if, of course, the seventh house is your open enemy, and then we've got the Mars Saturn opposition, so showing kind of war with our uh, being at war with the open en uh, enemy. But we would need, I would, uh, I would want to see, well, maybe not. What we do have, of course, is this moon 
as the apex of the T square between them. And so that probably would certainly do it, knowing that Moon is the co ruler of everything and she's the ruler of the part of fortune as well. So that actually makes a lot of sense. I think that this chart probably does work. I used it was a chart I worked with when I first got into uh, to classical astrology. And, you know, I was reading the one of his biographies at the time, and everything about him was about this kind of bliss, trying to, about unity, peace, love, unity. Uh, it was all about that, which is which really is encapsulated within this Venus, uh, Venus moon in Pisces. And the, the, the round head and the thick neck de definitely looks like Taurus rising. And, um, and his love of food. He loved rich, fatty foods. Venus is the fatty. Um, so his love of foods, his love, he loved his wife very much, but he couldn't resist women. And, uh, you, and so there was all that kind of, you know, very, very sexual, very sensual, very hypersensual person um, at the same time being this great or orator. And if you look too, it's oh, eighth, eighth house cusp is uh, sad, right? Eighth so, house cusp is sad, yes. Day chart, first triplicity ruler of a fire sign is the sun. So Most he's killed for his belief system. Yeah, just very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, Martin Luther King is a really interesting figure because he is the most, he is one of the most influential figures in American history that never held elected office. He's really, he's really almost one of a kind in a way. I think that vibes actually with the 10th house Aquarius, because it's about going outside of institutions. He, he didn't operate within the system. He was outside of the system. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And we could even say that this Mars and Gemini was the self undoing, right? Mars in the 12th, Mars uh, ruler of the 12th, this verbal, this verbal aggression. And mind you, you're, so now you know why I was saying, yes, he was loved by the public. No, he wasn't. Yes, he had a good reputation. No, he didn't. Um, and even it even comes down to the fact that he had a great reputation. Rather, his reputation was good until he changed the focus focus from civil rights to the poor. When when uh, Martin Luther King was killed in 1968, he was in Memphis, Tennessee, for a sanitation workers strike, and he was doing this whole poor people's campaign. People think that he was actually murdered for raising, for trying to raise consciousness among the poor and not for the civil rights movement. So the person that said, I think it might've been Shanice that asked him it was about the poor. That definitely was an aspect of it. Um, oh my later, God, that's nuts. That's why he died? We don't know. And see, that's the aspect of Martin Luther King we don't know. The aspect of Martin Luther King we don't know is that he was a conscientious objector to the Vietnam War. And like after 1964, when he wins the Nobel Peace Prize, he moves on. He moves on and moves on to trying to solve poverty. And that's what gets him killed. King in the Wilderness is a tough one to watch. Oh, it is. And you know, there's a great book. It's, it's not Eyes on the Prize, but it's something about the trumpet, Gabriel's trumpet or something like that. Yes. I, I, you know, and there's an amazing, you can watch it on YouTube. There is an amazing speech of Martin Luther King's that was done in, at Stanford University in 1967, which is all about his issues around, the, around poverty and the Vietnam War. Remember Martin Luther King said, is the one that said, the worst purveyor of violence is my own government. Martin Maybe that was the problem. Maybe civil rights they could handle, but class stuff, if you get all everyone to he unite was, for like issues he was like that. Too, too dangerous and influential. I mean, ultimately. Yeah. No, I think, I think in general, yes, but I think it, it's interesting that he wasn't killed for the racial politics but for the class politics. Well, they tried. I mean, it's not like, they, it's not yeah. like he wasn't endangered, but no, no, no. it was, it was, but finally it, it kind of happened. 
after he had now of course he was still moving towards those things but it really happened after it really happened when it when he's saying no to going to vietnam and and yes to you know helping people to strike more and things of that nature that's really it's the the it, what's called the people's the poor people's campaign or something like that i think it was called christopher is that what it was because was, you you watched that poor and and public opinion turned the minute that martin luther king switched from civil rights to, to working with the poor public opinion turned and he became a pariah so very 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 interesting and now of course a very sanitized version of martin luther king is what is kind of accepted as the what we will use and now you've got the, the worst fucking racist on the planet <laughs> uh, quoting him uh you know they should definitely keep any words of his out of their mouth all right i'm going to stop there